Good evening, Gastonia, and welcome to the 2021 City Council Candidate Forum, live from the Little Theater of Gastonia. We are so glad that you are joining us, whether it's here in person or the folks um, out there on our Facebook Live page. Uh, thank you all for being with us, and we're excited for um, a great hour to learn a little bit more about our candidates and uh, have, a, have a great moderated forum. Tonight's uh, program is hosted by four organizations. The Little Theater of Gastonia is the host organization. Our presenting sponsor, which is the Gaston Association of Realtors, the Gaston Business Association, and the Gaston Gazette. Uh, with us tonight is our uh, board of directors from the Little Theater. Ms. Sarah Drummond is going to say just a few words about this lovely uh, institution here. Sarah. Um, as Steve said, my name is Sarah Drummond. I'm on the board of directors here at the theater. And just to let you know a little bit about what's going on currently, um, first of all, we just wrapped up a successful run of our first production of this season, which was um, Midlife the Crisis Musical. It's a really fun show. Anybody that didn't see it missed out on something. Um, we have coming up in the next um, several weeks, it's called All Together Now. It's a fundraiser for shuttered venues through MTI, which is Music Theater International. Um, we're gonna perform 15 different musical numbers from popular Broadway shows. All of the proceeds will go directly to the theater. The dates for this are November 12th and 13th. If you're interested in some of the other shows that we have coming up this season, the next um, main stage production is Steel Magnolias. That is the, um, it starts Thanksgiving weekend, um, runs through the, um, the first full weekend in December. And um, we have the Untitled Week Weekend Project, I think it's supposed to say, or is it just week this time? Untitled Weekend Project, um, Holiday Edition, we are going to be performing one-act plays, written, cast, rehearsed, and performed in one weekend. And this is coming up in December, so if that sounds like something fun to you that you'd be interested in seeing or even participating in, keep an eye out for that. Um, we have Junie B. Jones is not a crook coming up next year, next calendar year along with Something Rotten. Um, Moana Jr. is our summer camp. Um, that's uh, just as a reminder, that would be a great holiday gift um, for the child in your life to purchase that now. Um, for next summer, it's gonna run July 11th through 23rd. We are also doing a special fundraiser to upgrade our sound booth um, in memory of a former tech director. His name is Adam York. Some of you may have known him or heard his name. Um, there is a GoFundMe for that set up online. As always, um, donations are welcome, and they are certainly very much needed after the impact of COVID. We really didn't have much of a, senior, a season last year. We managed to kind of pull it out at the very last minute with um, Mama Mia, but um, other than that, you know, we really didn't have a lot of income coming in. Um, we'd appreciate it if you consider um, donating through PayPal or check. We are also selling ads for playbills for the upcoming shows. So, um, and we're looking for show and season sponsors. You can sponsor either one show or the entire season. Contact for more information if you're looking to get some good exposure for your business as well as um, supporting the theater. We have a Facebook page that you can follow and a website. It's littletheaterofgastonia.org. And we would ask that you please sign up for email updates um, through Facebook, the website, or call and leave us a message and we'll get you signed up. So, sorry for rambling on and on, but Jennifer wrote this, so I'm blaming her. Um, so, she's really passionate about theater, and we just appreciate um, your continued support. Thank you so much, Sarah, for your continued uh, support and leadership in the arts in our community. And now on to our presenting sponsor, the Gaston Association of Realtors. I would like to call up uh, the president and, and chair, uh, Mr. Chip Wilson. Well, thank you. In addition to being the uh, president of the Gaston Association of Realtors, the identity I'm most proud of is as a native of this great city of Gastonia. Even though I moved for career family reasons a little bit uh, to another part of Gaston County, I'm still so proud of what's been happening here in Gastonia. I grew up and lived most of my life about a mile south of here, so thank you for that. I want to tell you as realtors, we certainly are people who are in the business of helping to 
um, buy, sell, and rent homes and businesses and commercial property. But in addition to doing that, we also are the one of the largest, if not the largest, professional trade group in the, um, in the United States. That's the National Association of Realtors. We are very politically aware and politically involved because so much of what happens at the uh, national, state, and especially local level affects how we do our jobs as providers of and sellers and renters of shelter. Um, you, you, have, you create the policies that uh, spawn prosperity, you create the policies that shape growth, and you create policies that create opportunity for people to enjoy that dream of home ownership. So I thank you for those of you who are incumbents for doing that, and thank those of you who are also running and spending your time and energy and money to do that. And I'm also appreciative especially of Kevin and the Free Press that uh, makes possible our ability to pay attention and know what's going on. Just know that as realtors, if there's any way that we can serve you as public officials, as candidates, as involved citizens, please let us know. We care about Gaston County and Gastonia very much, and we'd like to be at your service in, in any way that we can. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Chip, for your support and Gaston Association of Realtors. Uh, the Association of Realtors uh, provided some of our questions that we'll be um, asking tonight, along with the Gaston Gazette and the Gaston Business Association. So now, to the moderated forum, and I would like to uh, introduce, first of all, and I'm going to be cameraman, so I'll be shifting them to the left, and you'll, you'll get to see him soon enough, everyone, out on social media, uh, but Mr. Kevin Ellis, moderator and editor of the Gaston Gazette. Kevin has uh, been doing this program with us um, for a number of years. Last year was quite different, where we were in two different rooms in the uh, old chamber offices, and people were Zoomed everywhere. So at least we're doing a little more hybrid uh, and can see each other in person. So thank you, Kevin, for, for your support and everything from the Gazette. And now to our candidates that we're going to be calling up here. First, Miss Jennifer Stepp. Our second candidate, Dr. David Curlin. Next, Robert Kellogg. Our fourth candidate this evening, Walter Kimball. Next candidate, Robert King. And Richard Franks. So we will have Kevin tell us a little bit about the format of this evening and how this is going to work from there. And uh, all the folks that did send questions uh, for the sheriff race, um, sheriff's race isn't until 2022, but you do see a lot of signs out there and all. So um, we'll, we'll see how that goes next year and all. But we're looking forward to uh, tonight's event. Um, for those that are interested, tomorrow the GBA will be hosting the City of Mount Holly's. Uh, forum here online, and then uh, next week we'll be um, at the town of Dallas. So with that, Mr. Kevin Ellis, take it away. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the candidates, and thank you, Chip, and the guys in Business Association and the Little Theater for inviting us and having this forum. We're going to try to do this as uh, quickly, we'll do this in about an hour, and we have just some rules that I will lay out right now. We're going to first give each candidate about two minutes to introduce themselves and share their platform, maybe the reason why they're running. Um, after that, we will give me a chance to ask each of the candidates some questions. Some candidates, some questions will go to each candidate, some questions will just go to the particular candidates in a race. So we'll try to give it so that every candidate that has opposition, everyone gets to say something. Sorry, Jennifer. <laughs> but, but you, you have the best job if you don't have opposition, so that is great. Um, we have a timekeeper, and we'll keep time. Please pay attention to that to give everyone a chance to answer the questions. And let's get started. And Jennifer, since you're the closest here, we'll let you go first. And I'll tell you what, we'll just work to the left. Okay, that works for me. And I understand, and I, I know that most people are going to want to hear more from you as a house opposition. Up here anyway, just so people know who I am and that I am available. 
through all the constituents. My name is Jennifer Stiff. I am a lifelong resident of Gastonia. I graduated at first from Hunter Hunt High School, and then went on and graduated from Gardner Wave University and came back here to raise my family and to work as a school teacher. Um, I have been involved in the community since I was four or five years old because that's the way my family raised me. My family was very active, and I was actually did that myself. I taught my kids to do the same serving on many different um, boards and committees and being involved in lots of nonprofit work through the years. Um, my main reason for running is because I love Gastonia, I love people, and I love to serve, and that's what I've done my whole life. Uh, my main platform issues are, first of all, public safety. Um, keeping up public safety is a lot less important than the main um, thing government to do, and then making sure those people serving us have what they need to do that. Uh, infrastructure, we have a lot of new infrastructure and aging infrastructure, so we need to make sure we're taking care of that and providing quality services or continuing to provide quality services. And then um, economic development, bringing in new businesses and jobs, bringing our graduates back here to Gastonia and um, the amenities that come along with that to give us a better quality of life. Good evening, I'm Dr. Dave Kerwin, and I want to thank all the uh, sponsoring organizations that brought this forum to uh, the public tonight. And I want to also by say that um, I've lived in Gastonia since 1984. Uh, I'm currently the mayor of Potan and a seventh term councilman. Uh, I'm married to Nan Kerwin of 41 years. We have three adult children and currently have five grandchildren. And, uh, Gastonia has been my home now for 37 years, and uh, back in 1999, I first ran for city council because it was time for me to give back to the community. And being an old Boy Scout and an old Eagle Scout, um, you know, I've always felt that it was important to give back wherever I could. So, um, I resided in Ward 2, and therefore I'm representing Ward 2 in this election, for re-election. Uh, Ward 2 is in the northeastern section of the city. Uh, I'm very proud of my record. Uh, we have maintained a stable tax rate. Uh, I have uh, encouraged economic development through partnerships with the county, the EDC, and the DPA, uh, promoting downtown revitalization through establishing its youth district and building our Claremont Health Park, as well as historic preservation of our downtown and historic neighborhoods, improved water and sewer systems, and enhanced our parks, such as Rankin Lake, Weinberger Park, and multiple upgrades to our neighborhood rec centers. Our council has hired the first DEI coordinator, which is diversity, equity, and inclusion coordinator uh, in the county to improve our services provided to all citizens and encourage diversity, equity, and inclusiveness in our recruiting, hiring, and management processes. My goals are to improve public safety through community policing and provide ample officers for a growing population, promote good paying jobs for our community so as not to require the mass exodus to show up at daily, and thoughtfully plan neighborhoods. And I thank you for your attention. Good evening, I'm Walter Kimball. I'm running for city council in ward number one. Previously, I served on the council from 2011 to 2014. I'm running again because I think that the skill set, the unique skill set that I possess is a good fit to the many challenges and is still, are still facing in the decade ahead. I'm here with my wife of 30 years, Lori. I'm a retired police chief and I work in um, Homeland Security and Counterterrorism Consulting. I'm also a media consultant in those areas. But what I'd like to talk to uh, for about a minute is fiber. We've had a fiber in Gastonia that's woven both into the textile industry and also into the many families, generational families, that have lived here. Now we know that the, uh, much of the textile industry through changes in business model has left our city. But yet the fiber, the fiber in our people, has stayed. And from there comes our greatest challenge. One to nurture the quality of life and livability that we possess now, 
but also to provide a stable, welcoming, gentrification-free environment for those that seek to make Gastonia their forever home. So I'm obviously a very strong proponent of public safety, but also of balanced growth and a city service strategy that expands as our city expands. Thank you. Good evening. Gastonia, we are not going backwards, but we are on a road to something great. And if you believe, as I do, that we cannot go backwards, but we must continue to move forward, then I ask you to join our campaign. Just as those who built the railroad and the mills had a vision for something better, so too do the working class people of this great city. Their story of hope and optimism is also my story, and I believe it's also yours. To those who doubt, I say Gastonia is finally coming into its own and becoming a regional destination instead of a pit stop off of I-85. We did that. I did that. And over the past six years, my voice has been instrumental in achieving the following. Over 100 million economic development invested in our city. Hundreds of good paying jobs created in construction, warehouse, manufacturing, plastics, and management. The revitalization of Western Gastonia with the opening of Hughes and the soon to open Trenton Mill Loft Apartments, Derby Bowl Brewery, and Center City Crossing Apartments in downtown. More parks and green space on the way and building affordable housing for our seniors and working class. With all of this success, we also had challenges. No city that is growing does not have growing pains, and we have some. Continue, we must continue to balance our growth with needed infrastructure and housing, continue to make our city a welcoming place for all people, continue to work with our city police on ways to recruit new officers and retain the veteran officers we have. And as the candidate for Ward 1 that the Police Benevolent Association officers endorsed, I want our officers to know that I will fight for them, to have a fair wage just as I have fought for the working class people of our city for the past six years. Thank you. Hi, good evening. My name is Robert King. I'm running for City Council Ward 1. I was born and raised in North Carolina. Into a working class family. My wife was born here in Gastonia. She grew up in Gardner Park. We've made our home here for over 20 years and we raised our children here. I was taught early on that if you want to achieve something, you have to work for it. So at the age of 12, I decided I wanted to go to college. I started a lawn mowing service to start raising money for that purpose. I've been working ever since. I studied hard and earned acceptance to UNC Chapel Hill. My career after graduation includes WBTV in Charlotte, 10 years as a senior account representative with General Electric, and now over 20 years with Sunshine Uniform Service in West Gastonia. I'm running for city council because I love our community. I believe our local representatives have lost sight of the fundamental responsibilities of municipal government, which are public safety, city services, and infrastructure management. I'm a business person. First and foremost, not a politician. I'm the only Ward 1 candidate with extensive private sector management experience. I'm the only Ward 1 candidate who's actually created jobs. I know the reality of being fully responsible for risk, having to adhere to a budget, making a payroll, dealing with technology, personnel, transportation, crises, and more. I do that every day. This is a real world experience. It's not a safety net of public resources or opportunity to shift responsibility. In Gastonia, we currently have a crime rate that's more than double the national average. Basic services aren't being provided efficiently, and sometimes not at all. I want Gastonia to thrive, but our infrastructure is not sufficiently prepared for growth. I want to bring the focus back to serving all the people of Gastonia. My commitment to you is to have the things done that you've conveyed, conveyed to me, which are to take care of these basic services. I'm the only candidate with the experience and skill set to bring the focus back to serving people of Gaston. Thank you. My name is Richard Franks. I'm running for Ward 2. And uh, much like 
Robert, I am not a politician. I'm a servant of the people. That is part of the reason that I am running because I think the city council has lost sight of what the average citizen in the city of Gastonia expects the city of Gastonia to give them. I hear more and more from the taxpayers. They don't feel like they're getting their tax dollars returned to them in an efficient manner. And I'm not as polished as some of these other people up here because like I said, I'm not a politician. I grew up here, I was born and raised in South Gastonia. I'm very proud of that because it taught me a strong work ethic, much like Robert. I've been working since I was nine years old and I worked until I was about the age of 50 or 51. And just like my parents, they taught me to work hard, but also give back to the community. So that's part of the reason I'm also running for the city of Gastonia, the city council is to give back. I have 35 plus years of business experience. I've had to meet payroll. I've had to deal with media. And I was very successful with that. And I was successful enough that when I retired at the age of 50, 51, around in there, I actually still work part-time. But it's the sense of giving back that I moved back to Gastonia. I could have retired anywhere in the world. And a lot of my friends asked me, why did you move back to Gastonia? And since I've been back, I've been active in the community. I'm not one that pats myself on the back. I don't list all the boards I've been on, all the things that I've done, because I don't do it for the recognition. I don't do it so I can sit up here on a panel and say, oh, I do this. I do it because I truly want to give back to the community of Gastonia. That's why I'm running. Thank you. This will be a question for everybody, but before we get to the question, let me just say that there will be no rebuttals but everyone will have 60 seconds at the end of the forum to sort of make a closing statement. And this is for everybody, and Jennifer, we'll start with you because this is an important question from the Gaston Association of Realtors. Our community does not have enough available houses to accommodate growth and building. Let me start again. Our community does not have enough homes to accommodate growth and building takes time. What would you do to help encourage quality residential development and all price points? Um, we are currently um, already doing that. We are aware that we have a, a shortage of housing and a shortage of more affordable and workforce housing. But we have had um, a boom in development and we have several things that are in the pipeline now waiting to go through planning commission and waiting. Some have already gone through planning commission. Um, we are encouraged that by our economic development uh, department who are out constantly recruiting um, developers to come into the area that now we're not even having to recruit so much, they're coming to us. So we would continue to do those things, make sure we have diverse types of housing um, throughout the, the, um, the whole city um, and continue to bring the jobs which brings people in and the amenities that bring people in and continue to work with the county to provide good education which brings people in. Our planning staff has been very proactive in, uh, in the recent past. And so one of the problems we've had is only having essentially multifamily residential housing as well as single family home housing. And so uh, what we've been able to do is now uh, create ordinances which allow for duplexes, triplexes, quadruplexes. So these are ways in which we can provide more affordable houses uh, for individuals because they, uh, they're not paying quite the same amount of money in the real estate or land costs. Um, we work closely with and partner with Habitat for Humanity. Um, we are trying to bring as many of the surplus lots that the city has back onto the private market so that local developers uh, can take these properties and turn them into homes for our citizens. So there's a, a lot of different ways we've been going at this and we're just going as fast and as strong as we can to, to get these achieved. First off, and I mentioned it earlier, balance. We need to have balanced growth. Many folks are looking to relocate to Gastonia for a variety of reasons. We cannot fall into the trap of a number of other major cities where we have a cookie cutter approach to growth, which leaves sometimes our residents 
and certainly those that are contemplating a move to our city behind. We want to be diverse in our offerings, from over 55 to multifamily housing, to low income and middle income. So those that uh, want to move forward and achieve the American dream of home ownership can do it in Gastonia. But we also want to turn up applications and inspections around quickly so we can attract the builders that will do these complexes. Thank you. First, I, I think it's important that we all understand that really what we're seeing here in Gastonia is two things. First, our proximity to Charlotte has really exploded the housing market um, in this area. Second, it's really a, um, an issue of supply and demand. So as the supply um, gets smaller and smaller and the demand continues to raise, we're going to see those prices raise with it. Um, part of what we've been doing on the city council is understanding that we have to increase the housing stock. Um, there are ways that we can we can do that, and we've already started with affordable housing for our seniors and working class with several developments that have either been um, already completed or in the process of being completed. But I think we have to also go beyond that. We must work with the county to understand that this challenge is something that has to be a uh, collaborative effort with the county and all municipalities in order to meet the challenges that we have. Thank you. Um, okay, so basically the way I look at this is this is a, this would need to be a collaborative effort, and obviously City Council is addressing some things. We need affordable housing, obviously. We need housing for 55 plus, but uh, we cannot fall into the kind of situation that developed in Charlotte uh, where it takes people 15 minutes to get out of their neighborhood. It has to be stable. It has to be responsible. We need to add housing. We need to work with private developers to make sure that we're getting the best information on what is possible to maximize the availability of housing for folks who want to live in Gastonia because we want people to come and live in Gastonia and, and in Gaston County. Uh, so it is, I think it is an overall collaborative approach. Housing is most definitely an issue in the city of Gastonia. Uh, I am only lived in the city for a little over a year. When I retired, I came back to the county. But I can say that the houses that are being built uh, are appreciating significantly. So that's a lot of people want to build and develop houses here. Um, I have several friends that are in the construction business and they love building in the city of Gastonia. But the current council and previous councils um, have made it difficult. Uh, I was actually at the job site the other day with the builder, and I witnessed the inspection department giving this developer who is working on 20 houses a hard time over an eighth of an inch of a pipe. One of the first things I think that we need to do is create a one-stop shop in collaboration with the county and the city so that it is easier for developers to build in the city of Gastonia. This is a question for the Ward 1 candidate, but we have three of them. And we'll start with you, Mr. Kimball, and then work down. If you were pitching a business to locate or expanding Gastonia, what would you say? Well, actually, uh, it wouldn't be one, one specific item, but it would be within a spectrum of opportunity that we could offer that prospective business owner or builder. And it starts, as I uh, indicated early on, our people and the fiber of the people here. They wanna move forward and do a good job. They want employment back here. But also, we wanna be able to attract and open the door to new businesses as, for example, the technology park. And also to build on our proximity to interstate highways the airport, Charlotte, and some of the region's more rich cultural um, areas that people want to live and work in. And that's important, not just to work, but to also the total livability experience of our city. And that's frankly where I would move forward. 
Thank you. Uh, I think first, um, I, I won't take on a tour of Gastonia. I, I think anybody who has um, never lived here or perhaps only visited here, really once they understand the culture, the history, and what this city has to offer, they'll fall in love with it. Uh, I'll take them to the uh, Cool Beans Cat Cafe where they can see rescue cats who are hoping for a new home. Uh, I'll take them to Freeman's Pub where they can get a uh, ice cold beverage and, and maybe something to eat. I'll take them to Webb Custom Kitchen where they can see how a man with vision turned a, an old theater into a beautiful steakhouse, which is one of the best in the United States of America. And I would continue on down the street and eventually end up at Fuse, where they could see the vision of a city that, that understands how to invest in its people and how to treat the businesses that come here to Gastonia. This one's kind of simple for me because I've actually done it. Uh, my business is here in West Gastonia. The primary thing that I would do for a new business is I would ask them to come visit my company. Visit with our family. And when I say our family, that's the employees and, and, and staff management of our company. Uh, when, when the folks who don't understand what it means to have a relationship like people have in Gastonia see that, uh, it, it's remarkable. It speaks for itself. I, I would put our our people here in Gastonia at, at the head of a list of the attractive qualities for Gastonia. Get, getting a business here is one thing, but actually finding folks to make it work, uh, that's, that's where we really shine. And I've had that experience with the folks that I work with, and I'm, I'm grateful for the people of Gastonia. They're our greatest asset. So this is a question for the Ward 2 candidates. And Mr. Furlan, we'll start with you, and then we'll go way Back here to Mr. Frank. So, for the question, we talked about growth and development, but what changes would you propose to make Gastonia a more desirable city? Well, one of the main things is that uh, we need more people living downtown uh, because as downtown grows and thrives, it, it's like our living room, you know. When you want to invite somebody into your home, you like invite them into the living room, and you want a vibrant living room. And so as our downtown grows and thrives, so does the rest of our city. I think um, if we can achieve this uh, through some of our current projects, uh, for instance, Trenton Mill will come online with 85 market rate apartments as of the end of the year, and uh, center, center Street Crossings, apartments uh, where the downtown park is right now. We'll have 95 market rate uh, apartments within probably the next 12 to 18 months. Um, this type of uh, vibrant, you know, placemaking that we're attempting in, in Gastonia is going to spill and ripple throughout the entire city. Well, I miss Dr. Curl and I kind of agree a lot on it. I think to make Gastonia more attractive, we do need to develop more housing in the central business district. Uh, we need to clean Main Street a little. Um, that's a proposal that I proposed three years ago when I had a business on Main Street, was ask the city of Gastonia to clean the sidewalks. And uh, three years later, it hasn't been done. So I think one of the proposals that I would make is that we do kind of like Mount Holly and Stanley have done, is they devote a certain proportion of their budget to develop uh, green ways and make the downtown area more attractive. Thank you. This stuff will start with you and just work our way down if it's okay. Oh, sorry. How are you prepared to mitigate the compounding traffic issues that come with growth. Um, I currently serve on the MPO, which is Metropolitan Planning Organization, and we have been working to mitigate these issues for quite some time. Um, many of the, 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 the streets that we have the most issues with are heavily traveled and served there. Those are state roads, and uh, much of uh, funding for those projects have been delayed and delayed and delayed. So we are lobbying as hard as we can 
to get some money for your rates and to get some things happening in Raleigh to get those um, those roads for it. I'm not trying to pass the buck, that's just how it is. Um, you know, we're working hard, I'm working hard to get things done in West Beckham, particularly on our, our neighborhood streets, but these other streets, which, you know, are a big issue, are state streets, and we are working as hard as we can as the MPO and um, as the council and with our delegation, especially since Senator, uh, Representative Corbett's on the head of the Transportation Committee, to move, find ways to get the funding for those roads. Gastonia was very um, <clears throat> proactive back in 1995 when we uh, we issued, I believe it was over $30 million in road uh, bonds at that time. And at that time, that's when we uh, we created a widened Hudson Boulevard and uh, many of the other connector roads that are coming from east to west through the town were uh, created at that time. Now you can finally see where the growth is coming and where the real estate is developing because we made access to a lot of land. And, and now, finally, these projects are coming to fruition, which is wonderful. Now, granted, it brings with it more traffic, but as, as far as facilities go, uh, if we refer to a road as a facility, our roads are excellent. Um, you know, yes, they have traffic lines, but it's only relative to what we've had in the past. We're, we're so used to being a suburban, rural type of environment we have to realize we're becoming more urban because of our proximity to Charlotte. So I think we're doing pretty well. We'll continue to work in that direction. During my police career, uh, I spent three years as a traffic division commander in a large municipality outside of New York City. We had tremendous traffic, but we also had innovation in traffic management. And that's through my experience, I want to move forward with some of that in, uh, that innovation. Uh, much of our traffic flow is at certain times of the day. We need to move forward with more proactive signalization management, the exploration of contra flow lanes, the widening of specific roadways that will allow merging and reduce motor vehicle accidents the analysis of the traffic enforcement index, which will show which areas are most prone to traffic-related accidents due to growth. Thank you. I think Councilwoman uh, Stepp really kind of hit the, the uh, nail on the head. Um, and that is that we have to continue to work with our partners in the county and also the state DOT. Many of the large arteries and, and major thoroughfares that seem to be the most congested in Gastonia are really not Gastonia streets. So we work hard to continue to advocate that they stick with their, with their agreements and that they are on time, which oftentimes they are not. Um, we also need to work on advocating and continuing to advocate for another bridge over the Catawba, as well as other roads over the Catawba River. Nothing is going to strangle the growth in Gastonia or Gaston County more than the absence of another bridge or the absence of roads going across the Catawba. And finally, I will continue to advocate for light rail going from Charlotte right here into Gastonia. It doesn't mean to stop at Belmont, but it means to come to right down into downtown Gastonia. Thank you. Uh, we have to do, understand that uh, if we don't take care of the traffic situation in Gastonia, we could potentially turn people away from wanting to be here. Uh, when, when I lived in Charlotte, we lived in the county. Within a year, we were annexed. Within a year and a half, they announced 485. Within two years, they announced Valentine. It took us literally 15 to 20 minutes to get out of our neighborhood. When I now come to a street in Gastonia and I'm able to turn within a minute, it's still remarkable to me, and that's over 20 years ago. We've got to be careful not to cut those folks out of their desire to be here because of traffic situation. State roads need to be lobbied for with the state. I agree with that. Anything that we're responsible for, as far as planning, new development, we need to make sure that there's inclusion in those projects that require uh, street uh, widening or increase in capability. Thank you. Well, most of the problems in the 
Gastonia is with the interstate system. And as several of the speakers have addressed, most of that comes from the state DOT, which is out of money. But we need to continue to work with them and work with the county and propose a, I don't want to use the word that uh, got defeated a few years back, but we need to build, like Councilman Kellogg said, we need to build a boulevard, avenue, toll road, whatever you want to call it, from southern Gastonia, southern Gaston County, to cut across the true southern part of Gaston County, not Gastonia, but Gaston County, and have a river crossing, another bridge, and we also need to work to develop another bridge in the new, uh, south New Hope kind of area down there. Uh, because that will alleviate probably 60-70% of the traffic problems that we have in the city of Gastonia. Thank you. Mr. Frank, we'll start, we'll start with you with this question and we'll work back this way. Within the last few weeks, the Save-A-Lot grocery store closed. Many of our communities do not have access to fresh, healthy food. How will you help address the food deserts in our community? Well, what I really think is when Save a Lot closed, you know, some people proposed, you know, a, a slimmed down version of a supermarket. The residents of West Gastonia deserve a full service grocery store. And the city of Gastonia has seen fit to develop certain projects like the Fuse District, which is great. It's a good amenity for the city. The city needs to step up and work with the developer, work with a full service grocery store, and if we have to provide the land, some of the infrastructure, that's what we need to do. Because the citizens of Gastonia, in that particular area, which is a food desert, they deserve a full service grocery store. But to get that done, we have to have our economic development uh, office which is currently working with uh, a retail group to bring a full service store there but it's going to take the city getting involved to help develop that project uh, i don't know how much more i can add to what richard said that's the same that's the same basic statement that i've made in the past um, we have uh, and i spent half my life in west Gastonia. we've got the Walmart Supercenter over on Myrtle School, we've got a food line on Garrison. Save a Lot is uh, located right there beside Hughes. Um, and again, I go back to, uh, we, we should never compromise on any part of Gastonia. Everybody, I think, should have the same opportunity. So I don't see anything scaled down there. I would like to see a full service supermarket there. One of the benefits that you would have if you have me on city council is, I'm my life has been spent advocating for business. I know how to sell advantages. I know how to market and bring in uh, business. That's what I do. So you would, with me, re receive a person who would be able to work with our Economic Development Commission and make sure that we attract um, suitable uh, supermarkets for that area. I have worked in retail management for over 25 years of, of my life. And I really understand the complexities of a corporate entity that is downsizing, that is going through economic hardship, and what happened to Save a Lot had absolutely nothing to do with Hughes, but it is a victim of a corporate decision to downsize. But that leaves us with a grocery store that is no longer on the west side of Gastonia, on Franklin Boulevard. So I, I want to just make it really clear that we have some of the hardest working individuals in our city working on replacing Save a Lot with a full scale grocery store. And that will continue because we have people in our city who care, people who understand that we need a grocery store for Save a Lot Water. Thank you. When I read the coverage, that uh, the Gazette provided on the closing of the Save a Lot. I was alarmed, to say the least. However, I put that alarm 
into action through uh, some consulting that I had done on the West Coast. I was aware of a company that's starting a new food service concept market that they've attacked successfully the three stores in a food desert that revolutionized an area where people were relying on convenience stores to get sustenance. I reached out to the corporate vice president who I had met previously. I told them of our burgeoning flight. He, right now, is looking for property in our city to put a new concept food store that will serve the residents of West Gastonia in the food desert. Suffice it to say, this is not a new problem. Uh, Mayor Walker Reed had attempted years ago to bring a grocery store to, to the Highland neighborhood and was unable to because there's something called the market and the market determines where things go. So when, for instance, Ingalls went to Dallas, that pretty much shut down the market for a Highland grocery store. We're gonna grow out of this thing. This is probably gonna be the organic way to do this. That means that if we bring more people into downtown, there's more heads, there's more, you know, buyers. You know, you're looking at numbers, you're looking at per capita income. As our city continues to grow, as long as we continue to improve the infrastructure of our city and we attract good paying jobs and citizens with good incomes, these grocery opportunities will come forth. But the city cannot push it. All we can do is work on the groceries. I concur with Dr. Dr. Curlin. Um, this is not a new problem I sent it for Northwest Gastonia. Um, and then people have been working on it for years. These stores, it's a market. These stores have their, their formula. And I too think that we're, and then now we also have to go up against so many of the younger people buying everything online. And I think we'll outgrow it as well. Um, I know that we have people who are working very hard in our uh, economic development um, department to attract people. I personally have talked to some developers who, and um, there is something in progress right now that may end up working out for the, in the near future. But um, people are hard at work, but the main thing is, is to grow the jobs, um, to bring up those, um, those numbers, to bring that, that store here, but people are working on it. And in the meantime, we're gonna to have to think outside the box to make sure there are ways for these people to get um, food through co-ops and such. Thank you. Just to keep the candidates who are opposed to one another together, we'll start with Mr. Franks, and then go to Mr. Curlin, and then work down to this next question. Mr. Franks, do you believe in prioritizing green space in downtown while new development occurs? Most definitely. One of the boards that I do sit on, I'm not saying this to pat myself on the back, is the Gaston County Parks and Recreation Board. And we are going full steam ahead, working with Cam Carpenter, who's the director of Parks and Recreation for the city of Gastonia. Uh, yes, for us to have a vibrant downtown, we definitely need more green space. We need to expand the uh, Carolina Thread Trail so that it somehow meanders into Gastonia. Because currently right now, uh, you can almost make it all the way to Rankin Lake from downtown. And if I'm not mistaken, I think you can, but I'm not 100% sure there. But yes, I'm all for it, and I think that should be a priority of the city council is to add more green space to the downtown area. Because the more developments, like the new apartment complex that's coming, that's going to have 95 new apartments, they're going to need places for their dogs, they're going to need places for their children, and currently, uh, that apartment complex is going to take the spot of a green space. So most definitely we need to increase that. I, I believe that uh, green space is obviously really critical. Um, a perfect example of green space was uh, a small park in New York City, I think called Central Park. Uh, and you, you can tell just by that particular park what it means to the citizens of New York. So yes, it's really important that we have good green space. Um, it was really terrible that we are removing some of that green space with Center City, um, you know, our, our new apartments downtown at Center City Crossings. But um, that's important too. Take downtown, 
events is critical. So we put a dog park in downtown now. Uh, we talked and looked at some uh, early reviews or plans for increasing our pavilion space out behind, um, but we would consume some parking in doing so. I don't think that's uh, as big a problem as um, some people might imagine it to be. So we've got opportunities. We need to continue to prioritize in that direction. I mentioned it earlier, balance. Green space, livability, and the balance between work and recreation is very important to attracting businesses and the people that staff those businesses, more so probably than ever before uh, in our history. So where we need to be, a couple things. Number one, we can't take any more of our green space away. Two, we need to be creative when we uh, design and strategize for new green spaces. And three, we need to maximize green spaces that are not vast, but that are smaller in scope, so neighbor can meet neighbor and we can recreate together, which builds a stronger community. So yes, absolutely. And I think we talked a little bit about some of these uh, parks that have already come into, into play. We just opened a dog park. Uh, we have the Rotary Pavilion downtown. We have um, all kinds of trails connecting through Gastonia. Uh, but we really can't stop there. And one of the things that I'm really proud of this past year is the formation of a tree commission that the city of Gastonia and, and then our city council voted on. It is a commission that will work closely with developers and our planning to make sure that we are maintaining a tree canopy here in Gastonia. We are proudly known as a tree city, also now a bee city. We want to keep those distinctive honors, and in doing so, we need to make sure that as development comes, as buildings are, are built, that we are also making sure that we're replacing those trees that are being torn down for development. Uh, if the goal for downtown is to be an attractive living space, do, do, uh, I don't see how you do that without green space. I think that's a requirement. You, it, it would be an asset for our downtown to maintain that green space. Otherwise, nobody wants to live in a concrete zone 11th Street. Uh, I don't think anybody here would, would really um, enjoy that without having the opportunity to be outdoors, uh, to be able to share that time with family, to, to walk your pets, that kind of thing. We, um, we are a city that is outdoors. Um, we have a great climate, and, and no matter where you live in the city of Gastonia, you should have the opportunity to be outside. I'd like to thank all the candidates for answering those questions. We have come to the final closing statement, and Ms. Sitt, we'll start with you, if that's okay, and we'll just work our way down. Thank you. Thank you for everyone who's been a part of this tonight from um, Gaston Dickens Association and the Realtors and Gazette and the World Theater and all the candidates. Um, I just wanted to touch on a couple of things. We do need to make the permitting issue, the permitting for new homes smoother and easier. We're working on that. Some of those regulations are by the state, by the way. Um, and as far as the traffic, um, some of the things that, uh, that Mr. Kimball talked about, I talked with our traffic engineer about as far as signalization and having flashing lights after certain times in certain areas and com traffic calming um, issues and intersections and lanes. And a lot of that um, we're working on with some will be from the state level. The other thing I wanted to touch on, we didn't touch on tonight, is the importance of art in the growing uh, city and making a quality of life. There's so much about art from education, entertainment, community, um, mental health, and economic development. So I'm still working for art, and I encourage you to come to this theater and any of the others in the county and the city and support them. See you at a show soon. One minute is certainly not enough to say all I'd like to say. Certainly, first I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to uh, all of you tonight the groups that brought this together. Uh, we appreciate this. It's important for transparency, for information, so that in the 
you know, in the process of a democracy, um, we need open and honest communication, and this is a form in which this can occur. So I appreciate all that's been involved. Um, we are in a wonderful city. Our city continues to grow and thrive, and it's only improving as the days go on. But as it does, it's that much more critical that the decisions made in the future uh, are very important, well thought out decisions, and that we have the proper people in place to make those decisions. I believe I'm one of those folks. Um, look at my record. I've been around long enough. Um, people like me and people don't like me. When you've got a lot of votes under your belt, there's always going to be people that don't like you. But I think far and away, um, I've tried to be a voice of reason for the council, and I appreciate your vote. I started this service to the city of Gastonia and the citizens the day after I signed up for the election. Uh, at this point, I have been to just shy of 1,900 homes, personally. From the information I gleaned, I put together a seven-point Gastonia Greater Plan. It's not my platform. It's the platform that I derived from all those interpersonal uh, interactions with folks of many different generations and ethnicities. Additionally, my skill set is uniquely applicable to the challenges that are coming forth in our city. I look forward to serving each and every one of you in each and every locality. And I ask for your vote in early voting in November 2nd. Walter Kimball for City Council. Thank you. First to the Gaston Business Association, the Gaston Gazette, and also the uh, Gaston Realtors, I just want to thank you for hosting this event tonight. We have heard from many people tonight. Some want to take us back to the days when an abandoned store and a half burned down hotel stood where now there was a multi-million dollar sports and entertainment venue. Some want to take us back to the days where our downtown had only a few businesses where now people are scrambling to invest and open them. Some wish to take us back to a more divisive way of doing city business, where I want to continue to collaborate and work with people to make this city even better. I want to build bridges, not burn them. And I want to tackle the challenges before us instead of playing the blame game. So if you would like to keep Gastonia moving forward, I would ask that you would please consider voting for me, Robert Kellogg, Ward 1. Thank you so much to everyone that was involved in, in making this event possible. Gastonia is a great city, but we do have a few issues that I think need to be addressed. Um, first and foremost, the violent crime rate that's nearly double the national average and a total crime rate that's more than, more than double the national average is unacceptable to me. Yard waste sitting has curved for months along with unrepaired streetlights, unrepaired roads. These are the things that the citizens of Gastonia have brought to my attention and that I see in my own neighborhood. Infrastructure that's not prepared for our current anticipated growth is unacceptable. We must make our city available to growth. These are my core priorities, but there's certainly much more to do. My opponents have had the last three terms in the Ward 1 seat. That's nearly a decade. They've had their opportunity to address the fundamental basic issues that I just brought up, and I don't believe they've succeeded in doing so. I hear a lot of talk and a lot of rhetoric, but it's time for talks over. It's time to get some real work done. We need to be about the business of serving the people of Gastonia, all the people of Gastonia. I have the best skill set and experience to actually accomplish this task. I ask for your vote for City Council Ward 1, Robert King. Thank you. I'd like to thank all of the sponsors for hosting this tonight. It's time for change in the city of Gastonia. I was born and raised here. I've seen its ups and downs. And my philosophy in 35 plus years of business is I'm always about moving forward. Our crime rate is out of control. There's a lot of yard trash on the streets. There's one neighborhood. Their trash has been sitting there for six months. They keep calling. The city doesn't do anything. Part of the reason I'm running is public safety. I do have the endorsement of the Police Benevolent Association here because that's one of my number one priorities is public safety. We need more officers, we need officers that are paid more, economic development in a responsible manner. And I can give you an example of that, and I'm gonna go over time. One of my best friends 
is investing two and a half million dollars in the city of Gastonia because we have talked for years about him losing his business and he has moved it here. Nothing was given to him. He's worked hard for it. That's why I'm running for city council. I'm asking for your vote. It's because we need to bring more economic development in a responsible manner to the citizens of Gastonia. On behalf of the Gaston Business Association, we thank everyone for uh, tuning in, uh, for showing up, and being a part of this. Candidates, we wish you the best of luck. Uh, October 14th, which is tomorrow morning at 8.30, early voting begins. There is one polling place for early voting this year, and it is at the Gaston Board of Elections on West Franklin Boulevard. Um, we wish you all the best of luck. We thank you, our sponsors, Gaston Association of Realtors, the Gaston Gazette, and the Little Theater. Thank you, Kevin, for continuing your leadership and moderating, and everyone have a safe evening. Thank you.